Hello, and welcome to the Healthcare Executive Insights Podcast. My name is Mike Sloan, the CEO of McCallum Group. And today I'm excited to introduce Sandra Arevalo. She is the Director of Community Health and Wellness at Montefiore Nyack Hospital in Nyack, New York. Uh, thank you for joining us. Tell me a little bit about what does the Director of Community Health and Wellness do at Montefiore Hospital? Okay, thank you, Mike, uh, for the invite. As Director of Community Health and Wellness at Montefiore Nyack Hospital, I'm in charge of educating the community on how to live healthier lives. It's not an easy task, but we try to bring as much health education to the community as we can through health fairs, community fairs, town fairs, as well as having different programs that are more, that are more focused. So we have programs for people with diabetes, uh, people who want to lose weight, people with high cholesterol, people who need some nutrition therapy. We do blood pressure checks in the community, webinars, different talks for different industries and different uh, organizations in the community as well. And we we are partners with a lot of the organizations in the community because, you know, who doesn't need help? Right. So it sounds like, is it a lot of preventative maintenance against chronic diseases? Absolutely. So everything that is prevention, we are there for them. So what do you see as being the most prevalent issue in your community? We're lucky to be in Rockland County because it's considered the healthiest county in New York. So we must be doing something right, I guess. And genetics obviously help. But, you know, we are also doing a hard work. However, you know, there are a couple of things that uh, we, in particular in my department, we prioritize diabetes being one of them. And uh, also vaccinations. So we prioritize vaccinations because we know that with vaccines, we can prevent a lot of disease. Now, we also have incorporated something new, which is the diversity in, and equity. And we are trying to approach the LGBTQ plus community with new services for them that are affirming and dedicated solely to this community in particular. That's fascinating. So what does that community need that may be different from your normal activities? What's interesting about this community is that a lot of people from the LGBTQ community, they don't go to the doctor. And the reason is that they don't feel affirmed, they feel unsafe, they feel that doctors don't really know their issues and don't know how to treat them. And they're probably right. And the reason is because this is a very new science. Uh, unfortunately, you know, the LGBTQ uh, community is just coming out now is strong and doctors haven't had the chance to really explore all the health issues that they have. And sometimes they're very sensitive topics and people don't feel comfortable talking about that. So that's the reason why we want to offer services that are exclusively dedicated to them because we know how to do this. Uh, we have doctors that have plenty of experience working with the LGBTQ community, HIV, HIV testing, uh, prevention, uh, prophylaxis, all of this. And we want to bring that now to our community in Rockland because the majority of people from the LGBTQ community in Rockland, they have to travel all the way to New York City for services. So it is fantastic to be able to now bring the services here so that people feel they can be served as well. That's great. So it's an underserved population that Absolutely. is, you know, got Absolutely. it, got it. So what um, tactics have you been deploying? I have to imagine COVID, if you're doing a lot of community events and, and stuff of that nature, COVID probably put a damper on that. Have you had to adjust your tactics and what has been working as of late? We love to be out in the community with people. You know, that's what inspires us to be out there where people is. However, COVID didn't make it possible for us. So we had to come up with other ideas to how to approach them. So one of the things that... Uh, emerged from those changes was the birth of a program that we call community chats. So what we do in community chats is that we have a weekly 
webinar, but it's more like a Q&A. It's not the typical lecture with a slides where the doctor is, you know, lecturing a crowd. It's basically a dialogue like you and me are doing right now. And we do it with different uh, healthcare experts. And we talk about different topics. And these are topics that either we bring up because you know, they are relevant to, or these are topics that people ask us to talk about. You're going to wonder how they ask. Well, we have a survey and uh, people have the link to the survey. And in that survey, they can say, we would like you to talk about this or that, or bring experts on this or, or that topic. So that way we keep communicating with the community. That's great. That's great. And it's so important in any industry, but I think in healthcare particularly, to have that feedback loop, right? To to get a perspective on what the community is thinking and, and what they're looking for, because I, I feel like it's so easy for health systems to kind of have a pretty narrow view of what they're trying to uh, try to do and services they're trying to offer. But this uh, this must really help out in, in those efforts. I, I also have a master's. Well, my profession is I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist. I have a master's in public health. I'm a certified diabetes care and education specialist. I, I do a lot of things. But something that I've learned in, in everything, I will say, is that health has to be two ways, you know, and that's not how we are educated. We are more educated like, okay, as healthcare professionals, we tell people what to do and people need to follow instructions. And that's not necessarily how it works. And especially when we work in community, like we need to have a listening ear. Yeah. You know, it's kind of reminds me of, I tell doctors this all the time and clients this all the time, you know, it used to be very much healthcare was a, was a doctor first mentality, do what I say. And, and this is kind of, they were dictating the entire conversation. But obviously, through uh, the internet and everything we have now, it's more of a customer service industry, mm-hmm. and you have to, and you're and you're providing healthcare services, but you have to be consumer oriented. You have to listen to the consumers, and you have to provide services and products that are going to be relevant to those to those uh, prospective patients. And I and I think um, that dynamic shift hasn't really fully been adopted by everybody in the industry. Something that we are moving more towards is social determinants of health. And it's all these things in the environment, physical or abstract, that have some type of influx in our health. For example, stress, right? If I just lost my job and I can pay my rent, I cannot pay my bills, and I'm genetically predisposed to have diabetes, I'm probably going to end up with high sugars because of all the adrenaline that is coming in my body because of all the problems that I have, right? And this is something that if it keeps going for a long time, I'm not just going to fix with pills and insulin. You know, I have to look as a healthcare professional beyond that and understand that this person needs help beyond just medications because what the root of the problem is still there. You know, we are changing that mentality here. We're training our doctors, our practitioners to learn about the social determinants of health, understand that diversity and equality are a very important uh, part of the of the health system and how we need to look at people from different perspectives, right? And we, as healthcare professionals, we are the ones who need to adapt to the patient instead of the opposite. I think that historically we have expected patients to adapt to us as healthcare professionals, and of course that hasn't worked. So we are shifting cultures. Um, and we are shifting minds towards understanding that every person that comes into the door is a complete different world. And it is a person in the sense that they're not just a disease to diagnose, but, you know, it's a whole bunch of things that surrounds them socially, economically, psychologically, and obviously physically that is altering, you know, the whole system. and creating illness. So talk to me a little bit about some of your diabetes initiatives. 
we have different things. Uh, so we have diabetes self-management education. So we have a registered dietitian, certified diabetes educators, or diabetes care and educator, education specialists that see patients one-on-one. -on -one. We also see uh, patients and their loved ones or their families if they need the support. We have monthly support groups. And then we also have uh, pre-diabetes groups. Uh, it's called the CDC DPP program. And, you know, we do, we do a few different things. So tell me, are there any, like, misconceptions or things that you wish the community knew with respect to diabetes prevention? I think that I would like for more people to realize that diabetes can be either prevented or postponed. Meaning the fact that you're told that your sugars are going higher or that you have pre-diabetes gives you a chance to do something now to postpone the onset of diabetes or even not get it at all, you know? So if more people were proactive when they are told that their sugars are going up, I think that we wouldn't have the numbers of people with diabetes that we have right now. Yeah, and it seems like healthcare in, in general is starting to head in that direction where everything is more about prevention. Um, you see that even with Medicare and with major insurance carriers like Verizon, Cigna, Aetna, all incorporating these value-based care models, which really look at the holistic uh, ability to treat a patient as opposed to being more reactive and treating symptoms of a condition. Um, so I, I think that that's going to hopefully have a, a better macro effect on, on healthcare in the U.S. particularly. Yes, and as you say, some of these insurances, they are paying now for gyms so that you can go and exercise. If you're not a smoker, you don't have to pay as much. If your weight is okay, you don't have to pay as much. So they're giving you breaks if you have a healthier lifestyle. And I think that's great. With respect to the LGBTQ stuff, you mentioned that this is kind of a newer program, and, and it's really uh, something that doesn't have a lot of awareness out there yet. Um, is there anything you want that LGBTQ community to really be aware of about your services or just maybe not that community? What should everybody else know about the, the services needed for the LGBTQ community? For the LGBTQ community, I would like to say that now you have a medical home in Rotland County. You don't have to travel far. I understand that you travel far because you're looking for a specialist. You're looking for people and healthcare professionals that know what happens to you or it might be happening to you and that you can trust. And we have that now in Rockland. And then for the people around us that are not part of the LGBTQ community, you know, some people are very happy and have received the news very well. Some people, not so much. And I would just like to say to everybody that we all deserve good services. We all deserve to have the best doctors, the best care, regardless of color, religion, nationality, sexual identity or preference. You know, it, it doesn't matter. We're really all human beings. We all have a physical body that needs treatments, and we all deserve to have the best. Agreed. Well said. And what types of providers or specialists are involved in that process? Is it mostly primary care and family medicine docs? Is it uh, any other type of specialists that kind of get involved in this program? Well, Montefiore Medical Center has a beautiful program that is the social medicine program. So a lot of our doctors train in the social medicine program, and then they become doctors at Montefiore. What the social medicine program teaches is to meet the needs of a diverse community. And remember, you know, they are in the Bronx. So we are all trained in the Bronx. 
and with a very diverse group of people. And we learn to approach diversity in a very different way that probably happens in some other states or even some other cities. So mm -hmm. most of the doctors that are managing the LGBTQ community right now, they are family medicine doctors, generalists, or also infectionists. Gotcha. Okay. Have you seen any other health systems approach this in a way that you've kind of modeled Montefiore's program on? Is there anybody else you guys have like seen in the healthcare community that does a very good job at um, treating you know the LGBTQ community? Well, I'm sure there are some more. I think there are some in California for what I know, but definitely in New York, um, Montefiore is is the leader in LGBTQ plus treatment. And not just because, again, the science of medicine, but also because of the way or the personal treatment that we give to our patients. Excellent, excellent. Well, um, listen, I think we'll we'll wrap up our conversation. It was such a pleasure having you on today, Sandra. And um, is there anything else you would like to say before we wrap up? Maybe that I would like to invite you know, any member of the LGBTQ community to visit us at our community wellness center because, you know, all the doors are open for everyone. And also, you know, if there are people in the community that have diabetes or pre-diabetes or, you know, anyone who would like to learn uh, more about our programs or how we approach the community, they're welcome. So. I'll be Excellent. happy to, to help anyone. So where can they get more information on this? Well, they can email me directly or they can go to our website, montefiornayak.org. And we have a tab that it's called community or education. So you'll find us there. We'll put links to your email and that URL along with this video. So people will Great. be able to find it. Excellent. Thank you. All right. All right, Sandra. Well, have a fabulous weekend. Stay cool and uh, look forward to chatting further. Yes, I'll see you again. Thank you so much. All right. Okay. You're welcome. Yeah.